Hey guys, and welcome to Petroped, and welcome to Stockholm in Sweden, and the much anticipated Kia EV6 GT, the most powerful Kia ever made. So when Kia announced the EV6 to the world quite some time ago now, they did so with this, the GT, and they teased us all with some real headline-grabbing numbers. 577 bhp, 740 newton meters of torque, a top speed of 162 miles an hour, and a dash from zero to 60 in just three and a half seconds. And I read the press brief and thought, this is a Kia, this car's gonna be epic. But the first cars that came to market weren't the GT, weren't the super powerful ones. We had a normal two wheel drive and four wheel drive variants. And I got my hands on one earlier this year and I must say it impressed me greatly. It is a cracking electric car. I think first of all, the styling, this kind of crossover format, it's, it's, it's edgy and cool and it's got interesting angles. I'm, a bigger fan of the front than the rear, but I just think it's a very cool looking car and on the road it has such presence. The normal EV6 is a very impressive car to drive. It's packed full of great technology. The interior, the choice of materials, the build quality, it's right up there. And therefore, I think it's a great car. Now, with this car, what Kia have done is thrown into the mix their most powerful car ever. The underpinnings are the same, it's the same chassis, but we've got slightly different motor configuration. It's a dual motor setup, a bigger motor on the rear axle than the front. We've got the same size battery pack. We've got 800 volt electrical system, which improves rapid charging and also power deployment when you're on it. It's got the three base drive modes that a normal EV6 would have, eco, normal and sport. But then there's a special button on the steering wheel, a lime green button that says GT. And when you push GT mode, you're basically turning everything up to 11 and you have a very different car underneath you. Very different. So in this video, I want to try and highlight what's new in the GT rather than doing, if you like, a ground up EV6 review. I've already done one of those. If you want to see my EV6 review, just click on the banner in the top right hand corner of your screen. So there are some significant changes, certainly in terms of power. I've mentioned the headline figures. Very shortly, we're at a test facility just near Stockholm. So we're gonna be able to put the car through some tests that aren't legal on the public roads, and then I'm gonna take it out for spin on the public roads and just talk about what it's like. Because one of the real challenges, when you give a car like this so much more power, for sure there's a group of drivers that want to be able to access that and tap into it and enjoy it to the max but you also don't want to make the car difficult to drive for the less experienced driver. And Kia have managed a really interesting party piece with this car. So let's talk about some specifics that are different on the GT compared with the other models in the EV6 range. And we'll start off with suspension, wheels and brakes. Now, before we talk wheels and suspension and tires, it's worth noting that all the press cars we're playing with today are in this really cool satin finish gray paintwork and I think it looks superb. I'm not so sure personally I could live with a satin finish car, they take quite a lot of upkeep, but it certainly makes the car stand out and there's a bit of piano black detailing and just, just really nice looking car set off by the wheels. So the GT has a 21 inch wheel, really nice wheel design with um, some nice diamond cut detailing and it's shod with a bespoke Michelin Pilot Sport 4S tire. And the tire's got uh, an acoustic foam liner to reduce road noise for NVH, that kind of thing. Now, in terms of braking, there's a couple of things. Firstly, we've got regenerative braking. Um, by just lifting off the throttle, the car will retard itself. And you can adjust that level of retardation with some flappy paddles on the back of the steering wheel and it goes all the way to the firmest setting which is effectively a one pedal driving feature. So in town driving or just lifting off you can actually retard the car without ever pressing the brake pedal. When you press the brake pedal under lighter braking you're going to be using the regenerative braking feature to slow the car down because that's how the car 
takes that kinetic energy and captures that energy and puts it back into the battery pack. But there will be a point if you, if you ask the brake pedal to deliver more braking than can be just done by regenerative braking, at that point, that's when the traditional brake discs and brake calipers come in play. And you know what I would say, I've done a couple of very heavy stops this morning these are good anchors. I mean, they've got a lovely feel in the, under normal driving, but when you really need to slow the car down, and with 570 odd horsepower, you're gonna need to do that every now and again, then, then the brakes are very, very effective. Um, suspension wise, um, quite different suspension to a standard EV6. So it's got a fully adjustable electronic um, suspension. They've actually softened the front dampers off a little bit compared with the standard EV6 and firmed up the rear ones. And that's just to help the car so that it doesn't squat so much under heavy acceleration. But then the softer front end just allows the car to pitch a little bit more into a corner. And, and this car is set up as a GT car. It's not intended for the suspension to be rock hard and you go around the corners flat like some kind of track day weapon. They want that GT feel, but you also need to have the ability to not have the car walling around and rolling around like a ship. And they've struck this really nice balance. We'll see that very shortly when we're out and about on the road. And then the last thing to help is at the rear of the car is an electronic limited slip differential. Again, with the car systems, it just helps on, on corner exit. When you're putting the power down, it starts to work out the best place to put the torque and, uh, and just let you deal with that amount of power. And it does it really, really well. Again, we're gonna experiment with that very shortly. So although from the outside, it looks like a normal EV6, actually the underpinnings, the suspension, the wheels, the braking system, the differential is very, very different to the standard EV6 in the GT. The interior, thankfully, is pretty much EV6, but there are a couple of really nice new things on this GT. Now then, the base EV6 interior is a pretty special place. I'm a big fan of this center floating console. You've got a wireless charge mat on top, a couple of places to put drinks bottles, cavernous bin just down there, and then underneath, you've got another huge storage area. Just in terms of the layout, it's exactly the same as EV6. You've got some nice trims, you've got a little kind of GT badge over there with some carbon fiber on it, but the show-stopping bit for me is the, the lime accents that you'll find on the steering wheel. You've got the GT button there, which is the special button we'll press shortly. Some lime stitching and then these seats. I mean, seriously? I think these are some of the best looking seats I've seen in a car interior in a long time. They're super comfortable with a lime piping and contrast stitching, this little bit just here, I just think they look absolutely fantastic. Now, the really interesting thing is they are manually adjustable look. And I love that, Two re three reasons. Number one, you haven't got heavy electric motors. Number two, you're not wasting electric power moving a seat when you could be going fast. But for me, I kind of get the electric seat thing, but actually I live in a family where I'm really tall and my wife's much shorter than I am. So when I get in the car and she's been driving, the seat's like this. So I get in it in this and go, let's go. <laughs> in an electric seated car, I get in it and I go, oh. It takes forever to get the seat back. So I actually like manual seats. And that's it. You know, the same MMI, the same kind of uh, sweeping screen. And I can't really say too much against the EV6 interior. I think it's one of the best out there. But this car is about driving. So the GT mode, so you've got Eco, Normal and Sport. The Eco mode gives you 50% of available power. You go up to Sport mode, you get 80% of the available power. And then the GT mode, that turns everything to the max and off you go. You can also configure the GT mode through the screen there and adjust the ferocity or the settings of various things like traction and those types of things. So one of the things they've laid on for us here is a whole range of different ways to experience the car. So what I suggest we do next is take the car out for a drive. And while I'm driving on some nice public Swedish roads, we can talk about some of the cool things I got to do when I played with this car this morning. 
Okay, so I've finally escaped the test facility and they've put us on a, a nice route to explore some of the Swedish countryside. This is actually the first time I've ever driven in Sweden. And it's a lovely forest environment, very beautiful landscape. This particular review isn't going to be so much about the basic drive modes of the car because I covered that in my normal EV6 review. As I said, in the eco mode, you're only really able to tap into 50% of the power available, which let's face it, 570 plus horsepower is a lot. But on a normal road like this, what that translates to is even someone who's not used to driving a really powerful car, this, this car shouldn't be intimidating for them. They should be able to just get in it, drive it to the shops. It's a normal, everyday driver. You can step up through the modes up into sport mode. You've now got some 70% of the power available and you can push on and down a slightly wider road than this. I'm sure you could have a great deal of fun. But at the test facility we've just left behind, the very first exposure to the car we all got was following one of the instructors in the car in GT mode. So let's jump to that and just have a look at what it's like when you push on down a tight and twisty road like this <laughs> with an EV6 coming the other way, clearly another one of us, but when you know there's nothing coming the other way. So straight away, the, that instant talk, and, it, and it's quite nice today because I think I've only driven an EV on track once, and that was a Polestar 2. And what struck me about that experience was the different driving techniques to driving an EV on track compared with an internal combustion engine car. That instant talk, and whenever you hear a performance EV reviewed, everyone goes on about the 0 to 60 time, and in this car, 0 to 60 time is three and a half seconds, which is pretty pacey. But actually, in my experience, that's not the impressive number. The impressive number in a performance EV like this will be your mid-range acceleration, your 30 to 50 or 30 to 60. That instant torque delivers an acceleration when you need it the most for me, and that's when you want to overtake something. You come up behind a slower car, you want to be in danger as little as possible so you pull out and you want to go and that that's where that instant talk really comes in so these higher performance vehicles for sure the 0 to 60 time is important and impressive but actually it's that mid-range acceleration so when you're on a, a track like this the bit you, that you'll find is you get to an apex and you've got there's no needing to be in the right gear there's no change down in an auto box you've got that torque straight away and what that means is you can get on the power at an instant the second you hit the apex bang you can go and what that means is a totally different set of driving skills to learn and I love that I love it whenever you have to change the style of driving and understand how to get the best out of a car And although this is a big car, it's got a large amount of mass and it's a GT car. It's not a, a sprinty track day toy. It's a, it's a continent muncher, right? It's a GT format. It's this kind of crossover format. It's pretty handy around the twisty stuff. So, as you can see, a really quick little car. I think standout features for me, if you've never driven an EV on a, on a circuit before, it's a very different technique to driving. That instant torque that we all love for the acceleration when you're in an overtake or off the line, on a circuit translates to the ability to get straight on the gas at the apex and pull yourself out of the corners. And you start to feel that electronic diff at the back of this car, just helping you out, making sure you get all the traction onto the tarmac. He's gonna let me pass, what a beautiful part of the world we're in. Next up, um, I guess probably the most quoted figure when anybody talks about this car is either horsepower or 0 to 60 time. 
so it would be really rude not to have a drag race. So we lined up a couple of EV6s side by side. I got out my Race Logic V Box to time the 0 to 60. What happened next was pretty special. Okay. Go. Oh, a bit of slip at the back. What have we done there? Three point maximum speed of 150 k's. 3.37 seconds to 60. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's faster than Kia say. <laughs> Three point three seven. So, when one of the things that I was mentioning about the dampers being stiffer at the back, softer at the front. So when you get that squat under acceleration, you can really feel the car hunker down, and then a little bit of wheel slip at the back. I'm in GT mode, so the traction control is backed off. It's not fully off. You can switch it fully off if you want. Uh, but that's that's pretty impressive. <laughs> pretty impressive. Three point three seven seconds in a Kia. <laughs> when did you ever think that was going to happen? Oh, she's quick, she's quick, she's quick. <laughs> We've beaten it. We've beaten it. <laughs> 3.27. That'll do. <laughs> I think. I think that's about as fast as you're going to get one of these off the line. <laughs> that's ridiculous. Woo! So there you go. Pretty spectacular. Just to put that into context, by the way, that is a Kia doing a 0 to 60 test in a very similar time to a Taycan Turbo or an Audi RS e-tron GT. That's how impressive this car is off the line. And I'm not so sure you ever need a car to be able to go that fast, but in the world of EVs, it seems a thing with Tesla probably leading the way at quoting this zero to 60 time, it becomes this really important metric for some people to say how good a car is or not. And don't get me wrong, it's an impressive thing to do and it's great fun to do it. But I think actually the mid range punch that you get from this car is the impressive part because that's the bit that you use on a day-to-day -day basis. The last thing they allowed us to have a go at, and I wouldn't suggest you do this on a public road, is in GT mode you can actually turn all the traction control off and go into a drift mode and get the back end out and be a bit naughty. Oh, I think I'm going to turn right here. That looks lovely. Now. All I would say about getting the back end out in an electric car is if you're in a, a normal conventional internal combustion engine car with a gearbox and let's say you're in first gear and you rev the car out and you get the back slipping there will be a limit to the amount of slip that you have based on the gearing right you're going to hit the the maximum rpm you can get through first gear and that normally is the thing that dictates what happens next in this car you've got one gear so when you start going around a corner, get the back end out, it's a very different technique to hold that slide. But they did set up a little bit of a demonstration for us. They put a little bit of water on the road surface to make it a little bit more slippy. And then they let us go full send. This was good fun. Okay, so I'm first up. Okay, Lucas, get lost. Time, okay. to, do, time to do some drifting. Just come to us. So I've got all the traction off. We've got a little bit of a wet circuit, and Come we're going to try some drifting, apparently. And when you are here, you can see that we... Okay, not too long on the throttle. Yeah, remember, we only have one gear. Yeah, 3.2 seconds you already made <laughs> from 0 to 100. If you're sideways, maybe it's 5. <laughs> <laughs> so don't stay too long on the throttle, okay? Just try it. Let's go. Let's give it a go. We'll go gentle to start with. Slowly, slowly, slowly. To the right, and on the throttle. Uh, a little bit a little bit longer on the throttle, a little bit harder on the throttle. Okay. You really have to get an impulse yeah, that the car starts gliding. Okay? Cool. So here's you go. Don't put 
don't put too much throttle on, so I don't put enough throttle on. Right, let's give it some hero, some beans. <laughs> and one more time, maybe a little bit far. Yeah, that's the right speed. Then to the right and throttle. And on the brakes, yes. Yeah. Heroic. That's what we want to see. <laughs> one more. <laughs> Ah, okay, I get it now. Okay, good. One more try. <laughs> <laughs> so I, this is, I think, the first time I've ever had an EV sideways, and it's very weird, <laughs> but really very cool. Not too long on throttle. Driving inside, a little bit slower. Turning and and braking. Okay. Yeah. Good job. Perfect. <laughs> Right, we go back and swap over now. <laughs> That's good fun, really good fun. So in um, GT mode, you've got a certain amount of um, traction control. And although it engages both front and rear motor, if you put it in drift mode, you kind of send everything to the back, it backs the traction control right off completely. And then you can play with it. You can, you can drift it if you want. I'm not sure how many EV6 GT owners are ever gonna do that, but under safe circumstances like this, it's quite interesting just to be able to unsettle the back of a car really very cool so there you go what a day i've spent here in sweden with kia final impressions of the ev6 gt is it's all the car i thought it was going to be i think it's just a really interesting almost a disruptor because it's coming in at a price point it's only about ten thousand pounds more than the top spec current ev6 so early 60s which i know is a lot of money but if you compare that to the cars that it goes toe to toe with when you compare stats in a game of top trumps, that makes this car look like epic value. I mean, you're going up against a Porsche Taycan that's pretty much twice the price. You get a lot of kit, the interior is lovely, these seats are great, it's a really good drive. The way that they've adjusted the suspension for me, the kind of stiffening at the back, softening at the front, it gives a, a, a nice characteristic. I mentioned already, it's very GT-esque. So it's quite a smooth ride, it's a compliant ride, it soaks the bumps up. Don't expect to buy one of these and have like a track day weapon of a car because that's simply not how it's set up. They're very keen for it to be an, a, a GT car, one that you will be able to do lots of miles in and you've got lots and lots of comfort but when you want to push on down a B road or you want to go to a track, the car's able to do that. And I, I really like that characteristic, it's a really impressive car. There's not a great deal I don't like about it actually, apart from the fact I haven't got one <laughs> and I will be asking Kia to get hold on. I would love to spend a little bit more time in the car. It's impossible for me today to talk about what the impact this extra power has on the predicted range. You know, this car will do 162 miles an hour, but I'm pretty sure if you did 162 miles an hour, you're not gonna get your you know, 250 odd miles to a full charge. You'd probably be lucky to get half of that. So a longer time in the car to learn what it's like to live with would be interesting, but initial impressions are very, very favorable. I'd love to know what you think, put in the comments below, but if you enjoyed that, give me a thumbs up. Comments below are always welcome, and if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to Petroped for plenty more content to come. And from the seat of the new Kia EV6 GT, exploring Sweden, I'll see you on the next film, guys. You take care, drive safe.